Welcome back. This is Crash Course number 13 for Source 2. I'm Sammy Chimone Hihi Aliyubi from the Eagle One Development Team. And we're going to continue on from our material basics that we learned last tutorial. I highly recommend if you haven't taken a look at that, uh, go back. It's a quick, quick look into how materials are applied through world and through hotspots. And if you want to be able to jump into this tutorial, understanding exactly how to apply those, it's only going to take a few minutes. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and start with blended textures. You'll notice if I shift and right click on uh, this texture over here in the material view, it has here a gray stripe. Uh, this is a blend texture. Okay, and a blend texture is a texture. You'll notice these stripes are coming across material. Uh, you can search for them uh, if you want in the uh, search anything that is uh, the word blend in it you'll notice that it pops up uh, so for right now this particular one has a blend and what that means is we can actually paint this onto here so I have to first uh, make sure I subdivide it so I'm gonna slip click on a face uh, come here to the subdivision it's all the way down uh, subdivision let's try subdivision level one Okay, and you'll notice that it's going to take this face. I'm going to press Control H. It's going to create a nice little subdivision. And this first subdivision, if I increase it to subdivision two, every subdivision adds more squares, which uh, increases, of course, uh, how much the engine has to calculate. So let's try it with level one. The lower the subdivision we can get away with, the better. And what I want to go ahead and do is I'm going to paint onto it the blend by pressing Shift V. Okay, this will bring up the paint tool over here, and uh, I can now come up with a bunch of different ways uh, of being able to paint on this blend uh, but for right now uh, let's just go ahead we're just going to select uh, on everything just to make this quick uh, radius uh, let's lower the radius down to uh, somewhere like this look look at this tool and uh, strength this is how strong it's going to paint it onto there let's go ahead and go with 22 for right now so you'll notice when i come over here every time i click it's going to go ahead and blend onto here based on how powerful the subdivisions are whatever it is that is on this blend tool and i can hold control i can get rid of it click to go ahead and paint onto there and so this is nice because now it's looking like it's missing tiles so if i unhide this <clears throat> hey suddenly this starts to look a little more interesting okay now i want to go ahead and do the same uh, for this wall okay now this wall let's go ahead and let's uh, subdivide it <clears throat> and i want you to watch what happens when I subdivide this wall, it looks different from this subdivision. Notice how this is nice and cut up into square quads. Here, I have what looks like a spider web. And that's because when we were constructing this, we do actually have an N-GON. And if you're not sure where it is, I'm going to press uh, Control uh, H. That N-GON, that extra vertice is right here. Okay, and the reason why it's there is when we were constructing the walls, it ended up joining with this wall right here and left of it. So that's where that extra edge is coming from. So uh, it's all right, no big deal. We can fix that. Press Control H to hide it. Uh, now that it's hidden, okay, if I just delete this vertice, uh, the problem is if I delete this vertice, it's going to delete this edge as well. And I don't want that. So what we have to do is I'm going to select it. I'm going to press Control N. I'm sorry, uh, I'm not, not control, I'm sorry, alt N, control N opens up a new map. We don't want that. Uh, alt N is going to go ahead and uh, separate this face. Uh, now you'll notice that if I delete this vertice that's right here, then I want to make sure that I uh, press control H, so I hide everything else, select the vertice on this face, delete it, press U. Now it keeps this wall, and I also on top of that have this subdivision correctly cut up okay so i can go ahead and press shift v and i can paint onto it correctly uh same thing with this wall click on this wall uh this wall it should be a quad uh, if uh, i'm not sure you'll notice it'll create a spider web but this one is a quad i don't have any extra vertices so same thing uh, press shift v and maybe here this one's really really messed up so i can go ahead i can paint a lot and now uh, the repetition starts to go away as I continue to paint onto here. Okay, uh, so this is a very important method. Now, if I wanted to get more detailed, I can increase the subdivision. Okay, so I can go from level one to level two, level three, uh, four. Uh, it allows me to make smaller and smaller details. Um, I really recommend, though, if you can keep it to level one, try to keep it to level one. Um, and if you have really, really, really big walls, it might be better to cut them up 
and then have instead of a bunch of levels have a, a bunch of faces each of them around level one or two if possible okay let's uh, do the same right here this one uh same thing i'm going to press Control h to hide everything else alt n because i know this is uh actually an end on here's the extra vertice let's delete it uh, this is actually what we want to use as our example. If I subdivide this as level one, I have quads, but I, I here's my goal. I actually don't want to keep rectangles. I want to keep these as square as possible. So the, the more square they are, the better. Now I could go to, to level two, okay, and that'll increase it. Or here's what I could do. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to cut another face here. So I'm going to go ahead, select an edge, press G to select the other edge. V is going to cut it up. And by cutting it, look what it does. It automatically cuts each face and subdivides it. So now I have what looks like squares. This is much easier to go ahead and work with. I uh, said I could go up another level, but now I'm actually working with a much more optimized version than if I had done this. If I had gone ahead and not done this, if, if I had created uh, a large one, then as a result of it, we would end up with a very, very uh, uh, large amount of um, subdivisions for this to calculate, and we don't want that to happen. Okay, so Shift V, uh, let's uh, dirty this up. Okay, this has a dirt blend. Okay, I'm going to do it around these pillars. Uh, speaking of these pillars, let's go ahead and uh, let's apply uh, <clears throat> a nice uh, concrete uh, 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 hot spot to it right shift right click is going to grab this uh, i'm going to go ahead and double click into the instance double click the faces alt t apply that hot spot and then exit out and right now my blends are starting to look a lot lot better okay um <clears throat> I, i'm going to just go ahead and finish uh, by just uh, applying these uh, as well and uh, i'm going to let's see what i can do to spice this up i'm going to go ahead and i like these black tiles um, I, I definitely have a lot more definition with them uh, let's go ahead and let's uh, select this uh, press g to select all of it v to make our loop cut and let's go let's move this over and uh, i'm just gonna grab one more tile just to frame this i like i feel like framing stuff allows us to really um get down and hold control to to get rid of the faces you don't want uh, allows us to, to to frame the hallways and doors whenever you can it's a nice way uh, to really uh, set everything apart so come over here let's go tile right here i'm going to select this it does have a nice blend to it if i in case i want to use it press shift t now i do have a difference uh, but because we're on the grid all i have to do is come here uh, go ahead and scale it down and now I have here some trim. Same with this one. I need to scale it down. And I've created a nice frame. Okay, now the, the rest of this though, uh, I do want to make sure that I have set to world uh, to the grid alignment. So just go ahead and select it. And uh, let's click align to grid. And then after it's aligned to the grid, I uh, just want to go ahead here and let's scale it down. All right, now it's starting to look like uh, this whole place is fitting together. All right, I hope you enjoyed this second tutorial on uh, blended textures and why it's important for us. If you're building in quads, you don't have to continually go back and fix it. And if you have to go back and fix it, that's fine. All right, but if you don't, uh, then that's why your subdivisions are crazy. Building in quads allows your subdivisions to be nice and neat. If I don't have nice and neat subdivisions, it's impossible for you to use blended textures correctly. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, we'll see you on our next one for uh, another in-depth look at how materials can be used to make sure that your map is looking exactly how you wanted it.